Okay, guys, we're back with chapter four. It's called Cockily Doodly Doo. On Saturday, Mother came to my room. She said we're going shopping for clothes for the farm trip. I looked up from my coloring book. No, thank you, I said. On account of I'm getting a fever that day, so I won't actually be going to the farm. Mother laughed. Don't be silly, she said. Then she picked me up, and she carried me out to the car. Yeah, only here's the problem. You are not respecting my wishes, I said. Mother laughed some more. I promise this will be fun. I did a huffy breath. Whatever, I said. Whatever is the grown-up word for that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. And guess what? I was right. Shopping was not fun at all because mother kept on making me try on clothes that I didn't want. First, she made me try on a shirt with checkery squares. Then she made me try on overalls with big giant pockets. Plus, she tied a bandana around my neck. She made me put on a straw hat. I looked in the mirror at myself. What do you know? I'm a cornball, I said. Only too bad for me, because mother said I looked cute as a button. And she bought those clothes anyways. Plus also, she bought me a throwaway camera at the drugstore. After we got home, I started to color again. Mother hanged up my new clothes. Do you want me to show you how to use the camera for your trip now, she asked. No, thank you, I said. On account of, I'm getting a fever that day, so I won't be going to the farm. After that, Mother did a big sigh, and she closed my door, and she let me color in peace. I got tripped, because on the day of the trip, I told Mother I had a fever. But that woman did not even take my word for it. Instead, she took my temperature. And so, what kind of trust is that, I ask you? No fever, she said. Then mother dressed me in my farm clothes and she drove me right to the school. We pulled into the parking lot. Oh no, I said, oh no, no, no. Cause the bus was there for the Sheffield trip already. It was parked right at the curve. Believe me, Junie B said mother, you're going to have a great day. Then she got me out of the car and she pulled me to my teacher. Good morning, Junie B said Mrs. Don't you look really cute today? I felt my forehead. I'm ill, I said. Mrs. smiled. I love your straw hat. My head is a flaming fireball, I said. Mrs. bended down to me. And that bandana is absolutely darling. I am burning to a crinkle, I told her. Crisp, said Mother. Whatever, I said. After that, Mother lifted me onto the bus and she handed me my backpack with my lunch and camera. And she waved goodbye to me. I did not wave back because my hand did not feel friendly. Just then, my bestest friend named Grace came running to me. Junie B, Junie B, Lucille and I saved you a seat. Then she grabbed my arm and she took me in the back. I sat down next to Lucille. No, said that Grace. That was my seat, Junie B. She quick pulled me up. So where am I supposed to sit then, I said. Lucille pointed across the aisle. Right there, silly, she said. You're sitting right directly across from Grace and me. And so it's almost like we're sitting together, except we'll be separate. I sat down. There's nobody to talk to over here, I told her. Just then, that meanie Jim jumped up from the seat behind me. Me, you can talk to me, he said very laughing. Then he looked into my ear and he hollered, cock a doodle doo right into my eardrum. Too bad you're afraid of roosters, he said. Roosters can tell if you're afraid, Junie B. Ask anybody. Roosters always pecked the scaredy heads first. No, they do not, Jim, I said. You are making that up, probably. And anyhow, if roosters peck people's heads off, all the farmers would have nub heads, and they don't. So there, ha ha. Jimmy raised one eyebrow. Are you sure all farmers don't have nub heads? He said, kind of spooky. Hmm, are you? He did a grin. Why do you think farmers wear hats? Jim leaned closer to cover up their nubs, that's why, he whispered. After that, he lifted up my hat and patted my head and he cock a doodle doo all over again. It's the end of chapter four. See y'all tomorrow.